Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how I teach vowel teams to my first and second grade students. Now, I have made a bunch of other videos like this, how I teach CVC words, how I teach consonant blends, digraphs, etc. And those are all in my phonics and phonemic awareness playlist. So I wanted to add another one. Some of you have been asking how I go about teaching vowel teams. So that's what this video is all about. If you've watched my videos before, then welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I'm a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a whole lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and strategies for K through two teachers just like you. While I'm not currently in a classroom, I am finishing up my master's in curriculum and instruction from Boston University, and I sub once to twice a week at my local K through two school. So if you're ready to learn about vowel teams, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. All right, step number one for teaching all about vowel teams is going to be to explicitly teach each skill. Now, this always sounds obvious, but I do wanna make a couple points here. First, I usually teach vowel teams after I've already taught CVC words, digraphs, uh, at least beginning blends, and silent E. So students will have already incorporated some long vowel sounds when they know the silent E is at the end. So this is a good time to bring up to them that that long A sound, A, isn't always made with an E on the end. There are some other ways we can make that if you're teaching, you know, A, I, and A, Y. You'll do the same for long E, I, O, and U. Now the most common vowel teams I teach in first and second grade are these right here. For long A, I have A, I, and A, Y. For E, 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 and E, A. For I, I, E, and I, G, H. For O, O, E, and O, A. And for U, U, E, and U, I. Now those are definitely not all of the vowel teams and you can definitely add more or less depending on your students' needs, but just as a starting point, those are the basic ones that I generally teach. Now another thing when you are explicitly teaching these vowel teams, let's say you're starting with A, I, and A, Y, you can definitely teach those together at the same time and explain that they make the same sound. Uh, that long A sound, and this is another way to do it. But you do want to be careful about some of the rules you might be sharing. For example, if you've taught vowel teams in the past, you may be guilty of, and don't worry, I was too, of teaching the very common phrase, when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. But in actuality, that rule is only effective 45% of the time when two vowels are next to each other in the English language. So what that does, if you're teaching students that is the rule, every time they see two vowels together, they are going to try to match up that first one and think it's the long vowel, when in the end that's going to cause a lot of confusion for them. So just try to avoid that phrase and instead of teaching that rule at all, just stick to the patterns at hand. So if you are teaching AY and AI, you can let students know we are going to be learning about these vowel teams that can also make the long A sound. Notice I said can also make. Because when we're teaching vowel teams, the main thing we're trying to teach to our students is that those two vowels together AI, AY, they're going to make just one sound. They team up to make one sound. And then you'll give your students plenty of examples. Now, when you are teaching this, you'll also want to give a few non-examples as well. For example, we have the word pale, p-a-l, pale. Let's change that to nail, n-a-l. Nail. When you're having students practice these, you can also let them know there are some exceptions. Sometimes you're going to see a word like said or plaid. Now in both said and plaid, you see AI, but it doesn't make the long A sound. Now in first and second grade, said will probably be a heart word that your students are familiar with already. So that one can just be for reference, but you can also think about that word plaid. There, it actually says ah, it says the short A sound. And you can have them practice, you know, mapping and creating that word as well. One last note when teaching these explicitly, there are so many different vowel teams that you don't necessarily want to teach them all back to back to back to back to back. The vowel teams are going to take a long time for students to master, especially like we said, because there's really no rule in which we can say they always make a long vowel sound or a short vowel sound. So they are going to take a little bit longer for students to be able to fully decode and encode all of these words. So with that in mind, you might want to teach that AI and AY vowel team 
for a week or two, you know, explicitly and really have students practice it. And then you might want to switch it up and maybe go to three letter blends at the beginning of a word or R controlled vowels. You can throw in a couple at a time as to not confuse students with all the different vowel team patterns. This will give them a little more time to solidify what they're learning. Okay, so that was a lot for step number one, which is to explicitly teach it. So let me just give you a quick chalkboard here with the main points for explicitly teaching vowel teams. Number one is the fact that you want students to learn the vowel teams work together to make one sound. Number two, it's important to remember that vowel teams take a long time to learn, so you may want to break them up and separate them because they take a while to master. Number three, make sure you are emphasizing patterns over rules. There are no rules, so instead you want to really focus on each individual pattern. And number four, with number three in mind, be sure that you are also teaching students exceptions within each pattern. All right, step number two in teaching long vowel teams after you have explicitly taught a new pattern is to have students go ahead and build these words. Now students can do this with a small whiteboard and a marker on their own at their desk. Letter magnets and letter tiles are also a great way for students to do this and a little more tactile. But basically with your students, you're going to say, yesterday we learned about the long vowel teams AI and a Y. Today we're going to practice making some of these words. And you'll model with students on the board how to do this. So when modeling this, you are going to say aloud to your students, I'm going to say a word with one of these patterns here. We are going to practice actually writing it down or making it with our letter tiles. For example, here's the word nail. Let's tap it out. N -a -l. Three sounds, so we need three sound boxes down at the bottom. Now let's actually go ahead and write it or make it with our tiles. N, we have N, A, this one is A, I because it's in the middle of the word. And then we have L, L, N, A, L, nail. Now whenever you're teaching these vowel teams to your students, be sure that as the teacher you look up some of the commonalities and different little things about each pattern. For example, if we're teaching A, I and A, Y, like I've been doing for this example, if we hear it in the middle of a word like nail, um, it's more likely to be that AI, you'll never see AI on the end of a word. So in a word like stay, st, A, if we hear that A on the end, that's going to be AY because it can't be AI on the end of a word. These little notes are important to teach to students because it's going to help them with their decoding as well as their encoding of these patterns. So we modeled nail, you modeled stay, you showed them how, you know, AI is usually in the middle, a Y is going to be on the end. And now you can have students do this themselves. So you will say the word paint, have them tap it out. P A N T. Four sounds this time. They can make their four boxes and then they can either write or use those letter magnets to go ahead and make the word paint. I would have students do this with about five to seven words independently and make sure at least one of those words is something that is an exception to the pattern you're teaching, like the word plaid or the word said that you may have mentioned in an earlier lesson. All right, so you've explicitly taught vowel teams and you've had students make words with vowel teams. So step three is going to be to make sure you have students decode words in isolation and in sentences. Now you can do this pretty easily by writing some simple sentences on the board, maybe write a few different words in isolation first, and then use those words in a sentence for students to go ahead and decode. Now I love to do this with my one page decodable sentence interventions. This is what they look like. Here is an example for the AIAY vowel team. Now I have shared these in a bunch of my phonics videos because honestly they are just perfect for practicing this specific skill. Up at the top here, you can see some different sounds that students will review first. So they have the A, I, A, G, R, G, R, T, R, and A. So they have some blends in here that they might be using in this page. Then they have the words in isolation, snail, bay, gray, paint, pale, and train. And then they go on to the sentences. Gail the snail was on the trail. And then there's two more. Also, if you're familiar with these, you'll know at the bottom there, I have two spaces for students to practice encoding words with these patterns. And then also to check for a little comprehension, they will need to choose one of the sentences from above to illustrate. Now, just for the AIAY vowel team, I actually have three different sheets for students to practice with in that unit. 
And also for each of the vowel teams and every phonics skill that I teach in that unit, I also have two little mini sheets for teachers to use that look like this. The top half here is just a visual for each of the phonics patterns you're going to be teaching. So for this, we have the long A making AI and AY, those vowel teams. So we have snail for the AI, as well as hay for the AY. And then down below is another little half sheet, just with some example activities for you to practice with your students before they use that one page decodable. The thumbs up and thumbs down side is just for students to listen to. So here they would have learned that those AI and AY vowel teams generally make long A. So students have to listen to these words, they won't actually see them and give you a thumbs up if they hear the long A or a thumbs down if they don't. So spray, they would do thumbs up, peel, thumbs down, etc. The little boxes with the three yellow circles in them is to show you some words that they can build with these patterns. So it just gives you a few examples for you to have them actually go ahead and make with phoneme boxes, stay, drain, braid, and play. And then the little ABC tiles is actually an example word ladder for your students to go ahead and use. So they would start with the word made, and then you would ask them to change the word made to the word male and then to pail, and then to sail, etc. So for each and every phonics pattern in that unit, I have a little teacher sheet like that in case you're doing it small group because it is an intervention unit, and then three of those one page decodables for students to complete. So remember, step three is to have students decode vowel teams in isolation as well as in a sentence. And step number four when teaching vowel teams is going to be a long continuous step because you are going to want to review, review, review these sounds. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but it's going to take students a long time to master both reading and spelling all of the vowel teams. There are just so many of them. But thankfully, many of your first and second grade students are going to encounter these words often in their stories. And as long as you make your phonics instruction purposeful enough where students are seeing these words a lot and they're having opportunities to both decode them and encode them, it will help them tremendously when they are reading on their own. So so some of the ways I like to review this include this game right here. This is called Spin, Say, and Spell. And I just mentioned this phonics game in my last video talking about five fun phonics activities. This particular sheet is for the AI and AY pattern here. You can see the words tray, brain, hay, and mail. And students can do this with a partner or independently. And they will spin the wheel, say the word aloud, tray, and then they will actually practice writing it down over on the right. And then students will continue spinning, saying, and spelling that word until all 10 boxes are complete. Now I have over 70 different sheets of that game for all sorts of phonics skills, including lots of different vowel teams. You can find that on TPT, here is what it looks like, and I will link it down in the description in case you want to check that out. Now I also have an entire print and play phonics games unit over on TPT. This one is all for vowel teams, but I will say in that unit many of the vowel teams are combined so that would definitely be a review type game where students have already been introduced to and practiced many of the vowel teams as opposed to the one page decodables I showed earlier, which really like hone in on one or two vowel teams at a time. Now, one last way that I also like to have students review blending and decoding these words with vowel teams are through some blending slides. Now, I love these slides because you can just throw them up on your smart board and use them over and over for students to really practice making those sounds and blending those words with both real and nonsense examples. Let me show you how it works. Here are the blending slides for vowel teams. Now I have these for a bunch of different skills, but since we're talking about vowel teams, I pulled this one up. And this theme is kind of an under the water theme. So we have a little shark that goes through each of the sounds for students to blend together. This is in a Google Slides doc, so you will open it up to slideshow. And then just by either clicking the slide or pressing the arrow, students will say the sound where the shark is. So here they'll say, a -g paid and you can see that the shark kind of moves across to help students decode or blend that quickly next we have w a t wait y a n yain k l a clay 
As you can see, these slides move quickly and they are a fun and engaging way to have students review these different vowel teams. Now, these slides don't just have AI and AY, they do have a bunch of the other vowel teams that I generally teach. So you can use them all together or you can simply go right to the AI, AY ones. It's up to you. Those slides I just shared with you are in the SJT Literacy Club and they're also available on TPT. So I will link those down in the description. I have them separated by skill on TPT and I also have them in a discounted bundle. So depending on your needs, you can get whatever ones you would like. So there are just some of the ways I would teach vowel teams to my first and second grade students. Remember, vowel teams are a long journey. Students aren't going to master all of the different vowel teams and all the vowel teams I mentioned at the beginning of this video are not all the vowel teams in the English language. But by following along with the different types of activities I shared in this video and incorporating them into your phonics instruction, your students will be mastering vowel teams in no time. All right, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.